Spider-Man 2? More like... What do you think? Spider-Man Poo! That's what I was gonna say! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the show at the views. Oh wait, I had more. Did we not want to do more options? That's no. Fine. You want more? No, that's, that's all good. We're moving on. Today we're talking about Spider-Man 2, and only Spider-Man 2, because I have a lot to say. There's an unnamed third party here. Um, more like Spider-Man Glue. Let's get into it. Alright, so Spider-Man 2, number one. Just the number one, that's all that's out so far. Uh, this is 90% bullshit. It's bad, guys. Like, you've seen bad in the past. This takes the cake. I'm gonna immediately contradict myself. Overall, the book is fine, but it's just, there's a decision that was made here by Bendis that is so fucking strange to me that I don't, I, I can't, I, I can't, like, give this book any credit because of just how dumb what I will talk about in a minute is. So before we get into my big problem with this, there is like another little aside that's just like stupid bendisness, which, you know, it's cute, whatever. Peter basically just says a line that's referencing something that um, was said by Ultimate Deadpool in Ultimate Spider-Man, which, whatever, it's cute. It's just a cute little nod. I'd be nitpicking if I said that it doesn't make any sense because Peter says that like some references are just for me. So he's either A, breaking the fourth wall or, or B, is just referencing some other storyline that happened in 616 that we don't know about. But again, that's nitpicking. It's just, it's very clearly meant to be just like a cute nod to the Ultimate Comics. What I won't let slide though is this stupid doesn't make any sense line that Peter says when so basically Peter and Miles are going off on an adventure to investigate this strange like pillar of light that pops up in New York somewhere and it doesn't all right so Peter references Spider-Man 1 he references how they went on this adventure where Mysterio um took things he Spider- he references Spider-Man 1. He references the fact that it happened, and that Miles is from another universe. This is false. This doesn't make any sense. This is the biggest clash of continuity that I have ever seen Bendis write. It makes zero sense. After Secret Wars, Miles didn't just switch universes. He didn't just pack his bags and go. His entire being was was changed to have always been in 616 or the prime universe as they were calling it at the time so this little line that peter says this like paragraph that he mentions about how basically the ultimate universe exists and has always existed and miles was there and all of his stories happened there doesn't make any sense i would give it some credit if it was like a reveal like oh miles was in the ultimate universe the whole time let's make this a thing this is what spider-man 2 is going to be about fixing the weird continuity retcon that's happening but it's not peter just like offhand says it to catch readers up on what happened in spider-man 1. it's not a reveal it's like a it's a bendis reveal where it's just something just happens and you're like oh wait what i have five main points as to how miles existing in the ultimate universe post secret wars doesn't add up at all so let's talk about those first of all if miles knew about the ultimate universe why don't the rest of the characters that were merged into 616 from the ultimate universe know about it why doesn't genki talk about all the stuff that happened there why doesn't bombshell talk about stuff that happened there being in like the all new ultimates and stuff where the hell is Jessica Drew? Why isn't she here? Speaking of Ultimate Spider-Woman, why isn't Miles freaking out about all of his friends and other superheroes who didn't cross over from the Ultimate Universe to here? Why is he just suddenly okay with all of his close friends just not existing where he is now? This does not add up. Yeah, things are a bit off, huh? Like Spider-Man askew. <laughs> if he does remember Secret Wars, like, the actual event of it taking place, why isn't he talking about it to anyone else? 
technically no one knows about Secret Wars except maybe Jessica Jones and some implications of other people remembering the, the battle world or a world before the one that they were in. But if Miles knows that there's an Ultimate Universe and that he was in the Ultimate Universe, there's some implication there that something happened either post or during Secret Wars where he like traveled over and is aware of things changing. And that is just not the case. And if he doesn't remember Secret Wars, then why isn't he freaking out about how he's suddenly on 616 and not the Ultimate Universe? Why does- if he just wakes up one day and is like, this is not my home, this is not everything that I know, where am I, how'd I get there? That should have been the first story that we read if the case of the Ultimate Universe existing and Miles always being there was true. And most importantly, the one that really shuts this whole argument of the Ultimate Universe existing in this new Earth Prime whatever universe down. Why didn't Miles Morales freak the fuck out when he woke up on post-Secret Wars world in 616 and saw his mom in the kitchen doing stuff? His mother died in the Ultimate Universe in Miles' hands. Doesn't make any sense! People were totally fine with accepting that Molecule Man somehow warped Miles' reality to have always happened on 616 just with an updated origin to fit his new home. Maybe we would get told that eventually in like a zero year or year one type storyline, but we never got that and we were fine with it. But the implication there was that everything was changed somehow. Something was retcon. Molecule Man just fucked with reality and fixed things so that Miles was always on 616 and his mom was still alive, all this. Genki was there with him. Everyone he loved was there with him, except some strange outliers. But regardless, everyone was fine with that. But apparently Bendis was like, nope, everything happened on the Ultimate Universe, even though it doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to break continuity in a continuity steep medium because who the fuck cares? I have such a hard time caring about this book now. The who is 616 Miles mystery was interesting and the reveal that we get here, which isn't even really a reveal, is so lackluster because it's dwarfed by the strange, weird, stupid continuity shit that we got early in the issue. And the fact that like what we're seeing is so underwhelming and boring, it's just some guy with scars on his face. I guess the mystery there is like, how do you get these scars? What is he, the fucking Joker? I tried really hard to reconcile this in my head. I was in the car with youtube.com slash comic drake while he was telling me about this reveal, and I later read it and formed my own opinions, but I was trying to like figure out how this would fit, like maybe he's not telling me everything and something here makes sense, like maybe this takes place directly after Spider-Man 1, but that doesn't make any sense because Peter is in his current suit and has very clearly spent a lot more time with Miles and Miles has very clearly been in 616 for a while seeing as he's like at school and talking to his mom and all this shit. It, you can't, you can't fix this decision. It's not a thing that you can just fix by going, well, it's fine, whatever. Maybe it's a retcon. We kind of talked about that earlier. It, it doesn't make sense as a retcon either unless they go through so many hoops to fix this. There's so many plot holes that this one little throwaway line just causes. It's a plot crater. I also try to convince myself that this takes place on an alternate universe, potentially, which, like, already that's a huge leap. Why would they promote this as such a big thing if it takes place in an alternate universe? Especially when, like, alternate universes is something that largely Marvel editorial is trying to shy away from with their whole prime universe thing. But, like, Gwenpool and Spider-Gwen, apparently Gwen's break that rule, and we got, like, Edge of Venomverse and all this stuff that's happening. Clearly, multiverse is around still. Also, the entirety of the story hinges on the mystery of who 616 Miles is, not like 617 Miles. It's it's about 616 Miles. That's why the story exists. So don't fucking tell me, me, that it's an alternate universe. It doesn't, no. That, just disproving my own, like, wants to make this make sense, because I want this to be a good story, and I want this to make sense. Bendis is a good writer when he doesn't write in 616, apparently. Who knows? Maybe continuity isn't important, and Bendis has ascended to a higher level of being that we just can't understand. He thinks, like, non-linearly, and he knows that all of this is gonna make sense 
in Marvel space time eventually, but we're we're our IQs aren't big enough to to match his. We're all sheeple to him. Like I briefly mentioned at the top of the video, the book isn't even all that bad, re regardless of the plot that's happening. The dialogue is surprisingly tame compared to Bendis conversations that happen a lot. Sarah Pacelli's art, as always, is beautiful. There's even like an alternate Taskmaster that shows up, which is pretty cool. But on the other hand, it's weirdly paced. The last page reveal is boring and leaves me looking for the last few pages of the comic like someone ripped them out and then sold an incomplete comic book to me, which is just an overall criticism of Bendis. And then of course there's that dumb line that Peter says about Miles and the Ultimate Universe always existing. If Marvel really wanted to commit to the idea of 616 no longer being a thing and the Prime Universe after Secret Wars being a thing, then this book would not exist and Spider-Man 1 would never have happened. But they don't want to do that, or at least Bendis doesn't want to do that. And they just give free reign to him because he's Bendis. He did Ultimate Spider-Man, man. Did you see this guy? He wrote Ultimate Spider-Man for 15 years. He must be incredible. Let's put him on everything. Let's give him the entire universe for a couple years, and then give him his own little diddly playground with the rest of the books. Stop. Just because he wrote a really good book for 15 years doesn't mean he's going to do the same thing forever. And I want to say again, there is zero bias against Bendis here. I love Bendis. I have all of Ultimate Spider-Man. I've read all of Ultimate Spider-Man. I've read and loved a lot of Bendis stuff. All New X-Men is another one that people generally hate, but I love that book. And everything that he's doing recently is so bad. It's so strangely conflicting in continuity with plot holes and continuity errors and just nonsense stop it write about peter and mary jane having relationship troubles again but like not in 616 just if you want the ultimate universe to happen again start a new one that's not called the ultimate universe but marvel will probably let you do that so do that Bendis's mantra is basically, fuck anyone who's been elegantly building on the multiverse dying and secret wars because he wants to tell a tale about some spider boys and no one's gonna stop him. So there you go. That's my review of Spider-Man 2, number one. I, I'm gonna read the rest of this book just, just because I want to see if... I, I guarantee you that little line was not a reveal in any way. Bendis just either doesn't know about the Ultimate Universe not existing anymore and not understanding how his own character is in 616 or doesn't give a shit, which is more likely. So, I don't know. What did you, I, I really hope that this is not another case of me like just bashing on something because I've been bashing on a lot of things lately. And I, I just, basically, I want to know what you guys think because I, I could be crazy, but I'm probably not. I'm, I this is, this is something I'm pretty comfortable with saying is bullshit is this ultimate universe continuity trash we have a patreon if you want to see more stuff like this it's at patreon.com slash orum if you just want to help out a little more than subscribing don't feel obligated to i got a cat you can see her on there and nowhere else she only exists on that website it's a it's a tamagotchi i don't actually have a cat what are we doing next time more like spider-man adieu Oh.